Uh, we started last week answering a question of what is premillennialism, and we talked about that it was really just the doctrine dealing with the idea of going back to the end times, the, the idea of an earthly kingdom and reign that would come at the second coming of Jesus. And there was four main ideas of that. And uh, we have a graphic that uh, goes back and it gives us four different types, post-tribulation, uh, pre-tribulation or dispensationalism, post-millennialism and amillennialism. And we said that each week we try and answer what one of those is. Now, Troy, I'm going to throw this one right at you. Which one do you want to answer this week? <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and start with number one, and we'll work our way down the list. That way we can All not right. confuse people. So what is post-tribulation premillennialism? All right, so as you see on the chart right there, you can just look at the picture and kind of get an idea and, and, and exactly what it's described as is post-tribulation. So there's this idea or doctrine that sometime – in the future, there's going to be, and typically they put a timeline like seven years on it, that there's going to be this this tribulation, uh, which I find interesting because it's as if we're not in tribulations right now or the, the Christians of the first century didn't experience tribulation, but this is attributed to many years later at the end. There's going to be a tribulation, and then this, rap, for example, Tina was mentioning the rapture earlier, this idea of a rapture and the resurrections all going to happen at the end of the tribulation. And, but before Jesus establishes a literal earthly kingdom on the earth. And so it's a little, what I call this is a different flavor of premillennialism. It's still a millennial a thousand year reign kingdom physical kingdom on the earth before the day of judgment which is what premillennialism means all right now uh i think that's a good explanation as far as what it is now why is it we don't believe and teach biblically <laughs> in the idea and let me get this post-tribulation premillennialism uh, i'm going to start with the easy one uh, it's John eighteen thirty six. My kingdom is not of this world. If Great. my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. And we know the church and the kingdom are the same. Mm -hmm. And that what he was trying to establish has nothing to do with about this world. Even the fact that uh, he, Paul would write to the church at Thessalonica that the world will be destroyed yes. uh, at the coming again. Well, not only that, but, you know, as we've said a couple times on this show, that comes from Revelation chapter 21. Uh, Revelation chapter 20, excuse me. Uh, in Revelation chapter 20, he mentions a thousand years, talking about Satan being bound. And then he goes on and he talks about in verse 4, I'm just going to skip down to the end of the verse, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now, you just got through saying that we don't know when Christ is coming back. That's that's one aspect of that. Mm -hmm. uh, the kingdom is not of this world, and so it's not, it's not an earthly kingdom. It's not a physical kingdom. Uh, there's no mention of Jesus anywhere in the scriptures coming back to the earth. Uh, I read earlier 1 Thessalonians, and, and it says he's going to be in the air. Mm -hmm. But without all that, if you just look at this passage, if you look at the passage, and I said this last week in verse 1, then an angel came down from heaven having a key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, the mm -hmm. dragon. Well, who's the dragon? Well, keep reading. The serpent of old who is the devil, Satan. So right there you see that this is a vision and that this moniker if you will of the dragon is being attributed to satan to the devil and so clearly we're not talking about actual what would you call that just uh, metaphors right right analogies metaphors and, and names uh so it's figurative speech and, and you keep talking you see he also talks about the lamb and all these other things in here basically the point being is the entire chapter is figurative language, but yet we're going to take that one phrase, a thousand years, and we're going to make it literal. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, an abuse right. of 
Bible interpretation. Yes, and, and and that's one of the things that gets frustrating to me uh, is how so many people want to jump into the book of Revelation and they don't think about there are certain concepts and rules of how to properly interpret. Yes. Um, Jack was just actually going to this. In figurative language, a thousand is merely a large undefined measure of time. Mm-hmm. And if you understand how uh, numerology, uh, figurative language, these different things work, it, it doesn't. It doesn't really, uh, how, how would I put it, uh, it doesn't make sense how people right, start be, trying to interpret this stuff. In right. fact, if you keep reading, we're going to read about that those streets paved of gold and things like that. It's all just descriptions and figurative language. You know how a song sticks in your head better mm-hmm. than, than trying to memorize something? For example, if I say Galatians 2.20, I'm sure a lot of you can start singing that song. He, yep, Jeff's yeah. already starting to sing that song in his head. <laughs> Because a song sticks in your head. Well, that's the same way with imagery. Yep, imagery sticks in your head. You know, and so what we gotta we gotta understand. Uh, I realize when we take these pre mill questions mm-hmm. and we uh, take these rapture questions, uh, we're not trying to insult anybody. We just want to give Bible answers to Bible questions and answer it by that. And what you don't see is one terminology again. <laughs> Uh, if we just call Bible things by Bible names, Amen. it helps out a lot um, so that we don't get so confused in the discussion. Um, and then we we can't teach things that the Bible doesn't teach. And now there's a lot of good people out there that they really think the rapture is happening. They think that there's going to be this earthly kingdom because it's been so, so bombarded, especially because it makes good books and movies. Yes, it does. And so that's where the confusion comes from. You just made me think of something that when you said that we're not going to teach something the Bible doesn't teach. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that just two chapters after the thousand years is described, there's a very important verse that says, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues. If anyone takes away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life. We're not supposed to add to or take away from scripture and so that's why we need to be really careful with how we interpret the bible 